chin mudra, close the eyes. And especially if you joined us for the first half hour, we've built up some heat in the body, but we've also raised our rate of respiration. Uh, we may have increased some of the movement of thoughts in the brain with this faster paced um, practice this last half hour. So just take this time to slow down, become centered and grounded once more. Especially when we're first learning sun salutations and we're increasing our capacity, um, we tend to have a little bit of emotional, I'm not gonna say anxiety, but there's more emotional tension. Um, when we start the practice. So we just wanna calm down. So let's begin, we're all in our nice seated position. Eyes are closed, hands are in chin mudra. All together, inhale, bringing hands to heart center. Stay here for a few breaths. Just letting ourselves become aware of the slight energy shift from going from Chin Mudra to Anjali Mudra. And sharing the pranava three times all together. Take a breath in. Sharing the shorter version of the Guru Mantra three times. Take a breath in. Om Hrim Shri Gurubhyo Namaha. Om Hrim Shri Gurubhyo Namaha. Om Hrim Shri Gurubhyo Namaha. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. And as you exhale, open the eyes, release the hands, let's come into child's pose with our knees as wide as the mat. And if we can, go ahead, rest the forehead on the mat, arms extended forward, if this is uh, challenging because of your shoulder or neck, go ahead and bring your hands behind, palms up next to your feet. Let's hold here. Again, using this time just to refine our awareness of our breath and the sensations in our body right now. Holding here. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Coming right into a neutral tabletop as you inhale, go ahead and come up. If you'd like, you can close the distance between your knees so that your knees are in line with your hips, elbows in line with your shoulders, whether you're on your forearms or on your wrists. Cat and cow, inhale, looking up. And exhale, coming into the cat, really rounding the back. Inhale. And exhale. As we do this, let's really think about engaging the lower abs to help bring the pelvis forward when we round our back. And then simply letting go and relaxing. 
that muscle group as we look up and let the belly drop. Let's do a few more. Keep pushing through the shoulders. Really understanding and refining the awareness of the movement of the spine. One more. And then let's meet in neutral tabletop. Thread the needle with the right arm. As you inhale, lift the right arm up. As you exhale, thread the needle. Hold here. Just a nice gentle warm up. Holding here for eight. Seven. Really relax the belly. Six. Five, four, three, two, and one. To come out as you inhale, come right back to your neutral tabletop. And other side, inhale, left arm up, exhale, thread it through, hold here. Again, this is not only a nice way to gently uh, warm up the spine, the shoulder, and the neck. It's a great way to become more aware of your breath because you're really relaxing all the abdominal muscles that help the diaphragm to, uh, as you breathe. So we just want to relax. Really releasing any tension we may have in the front or the back of the body. Four. Three. Two. And one. Coming out, as you inhale, come back to neutral tabletop. And then exhale, push back into Vajrasana. So today I would like to explore really the, the very subtle difference between downward facing dog and mountain pose. Now, in downward facing dog, we're really opening up through the shoulder. Sometimes for people who are very hyper flexible, when they're in their downward dog and they're opening up the, this, this angle here in the shoulder, sometimes if they take, Sometimes when they're super uh, flexible, they actually also hyperextend their elbows. And that over time is going to be dangerous. Or if you're having some problems in your shoulder and it's, you're lacking mobility there, but your elbows work just fine, you hyperextend your elbows. So we really want to take a look at our downward facing dog and just see where we are in the shoulders. Okay, now you're going to see when I demonstrate it that because my elbows do not extend fully, there is going to be, um, I won't be able to open up my shoulder as much. But I just want to show you some of the differences, okay? And, and I'm going to show you when we do dolphin how it looks. So just watch. So one of the uh, ways to get into downward facing dog is I sit on my knees in Vajrasana. I put my elbows to my knees, my palms flat down, and then I walk one more hand forward. Come back onto my knees, curl the toes under. As I exhale, I push back into downward facing dog. Now, in downward facing dog, you're definitely looking backwards, pushing through the shoulders. See this movement? And I'm trying my best to open up the angle of my armpit. So some people like to say that you're bringing your chest towards your thigh. See the difference between this and this? Okay. Now, this movement of the shoulders, it really doesn't matter if your heels are all the way down. You can do it like this. Okay. So let's say you don't yet have the flexibility in the back of your legs. No big deal. 
All right, so let's all come into Downward Facing Dog. Start in Vajrasana. Sitting on your knees. Elbows to your knees, forearms on the ground, hands, palms down. Just inch your wrist to where the big, uh, the long finger is, the middle finger is, and then spread your fingers wide once more. Before you even get started, look at your hands. Your middle fingers should be parallel to one another. To the best of your ability, you've got a nice line of wrist to elbow to shoulder. From here, simply lift your butt off your heels, curl the toes under. And now you're in a beautiful position to take a breath in. And as you exhale, push back into your downward facing dog. If you'd like, bend your knee so that you don't have to worry about uh, discomfort there. Push through the shoulders and now bring the chest towards your thighs. Drop the head. Remember, you know, the head is just kind of hanging around. Hold there. I'm gonna come out just because it's quite a bit of strain on my elbows. Stay there. What I'd like you to think about is the L shape between your thumb and your pointer finger. Put a little pressure there. Just slightly be aware of that. That helps to align the wrist, the elbow and the shoulder. Okay, hold here. Four, three, two, one. As you exhale, gently bring the knees down and come right into child's pose. Again, if this was quite a strain on the shoulders, go ahead and bring the arms behind you, palms up next to your feet, and stay there in child's pose. So just listen. So when you're in downward facing dog, it definitely it's about opening up that angle of the shoulders. It's about finding a lot of flexibility in the shoulders. At the same time, you're lengthening the spine. And of course, there's lengthening through the, um, the back of the legs. But sometimes we get stuck and we just think it's all about the hamstrings, but it's not. It's about really allowing that head to relax, lengthen the spine, open up the shoulder girdle. Okay, go ahead, inhale. Let's sit back up on our heels. Now I'm going to show you mountain pose. And the reason why I'm going through this is because it's really interesting. For those of you who are students of yoga, you're gonna uh, you know, be reading books on yoga and all that stuff. And if you're reading books that are written from the south of India, they talk about mountain pose in the sun salutation. Sometimes when you read about books that were written more in the north of India for sun salutation, they say downward facing dog, but they're two different poses. All right, I'm going to show you the subtle difference now of mountain pose. Mountain pose is not about opening up the shoulder. So, but it, but it looks the same. So here, I'm gonna bring my elbows to the knees, open up my hands. Um, uh, I guess I'm gonna walk one hand forward again. So it's the same way to open up and then I come into downward facing dog. But this time I'm going to let my feet come forward just a little bit. All right, my head is still looking down, but see how I have more of a straight line between my, let's say, hands, elbows, shoulders, spine, and butt. And my head is right in between versus, look at this. See this where I've come down just a little bit more. This is more downward facing dog. This is more mountain. Mountain is, is, is more stable. Now you can still do the mountain with your feet a little further away depending on your uh, flexibility. But what you don't want to do is this. See the difference? So let's try mountain pose. And the only reason why I'm bringing it up is that for some of us, because of um, age or because of injuries, we may we want to allow ourselves just to do the mountain pose because it's, it's, it's just as fine as downward facing dog. All right, we're all in position. Vajrasana. Elbows in front of knees, forearms down, palms down. 
walk, if you want to, go ahead and walk your hands one forward. Again, this really depends on your own flexibility, all right? Look at your hands. Uh, middle fingers are parallel to one another. Lift up the hips, curl the toes under, and exhale right into mountain pose. So if you are hyper uh, flexible and you have the tendency to uh, really extend through the shoulders and or the elbows, maybe walk your feet a little bit forward so that you don't have that temptation and just come into mountain pose. Again, bring a little bit of attention to that L shape between your thumb and your first finger. Hold here, four, three, two, one. As you exhale, simply bring the knees down, come right back into child's pose. So it's just a little subtle difference, but something to, to know about so that you can give your, yourself permission when you're doing your sun salutation to choose which uh, position works best for you. Let's hold here. Four, three, two, and one. To come out, lift the head, lengthen the back, use the support of your hands. As you inhale, go ahead, rise up, back into Madrasana, sitting here with the hands resting lightly on our thighs. Coming into a nice spinal twist. Again, we just did a whole bunch of stuff that was lengthening the back. Now we just wanna do a nice gentle twist in the spine. Go ahead, bring your hands out to the side, roll the shoulders up and back to set the shoulder blades. Bring your left hand over to the right thigh. Open up the right palm, inhale the right arm up. If you exhale, drop that shoulder. Inhale, you wanna grow tall, anchoring through the pelvis. As you exhale, find the twist to the right. Now right here, again, you do your adjustment, bringing your shoulders back. Do another adjustment to uh, make sure you're not leaning backwards. You wanna still be nicely over your heels and over your sit bones. Think about your chin, where's your chin? Look out through the corner of your right eye. Take a breath in, grow nice and tall. Exhale, release the right palm behind you. Hold here. Again, if it's hard to resist the temptation to use the left hand to kind of push yourself into the twist, just take your hand lightly off your thigh, just float it above. Now, sometimes, again, we have a temptation when we want to get more of a twist that we actually throw our rib cage forward and we arch our back. Try and keep a nice straight spine. Well, you know, vertical with the twist. Release tension through the front line of the body so you can get nice deep breaths for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Let's maintain this beautiful posture we have as we come out, open up the right palm, inhale the right arm behind you. As you exhale, reverse, come to center and release the hand. Opposite side, right hand to the left thigh, extend the left arm to the side and open the palm. Inhale the left arm up at the top, exhale, square off your shoulders. Think about your position right now, pelvis, spine, chin, shoulders, take a breath in, grow tall. As you exhale, let's find the twist. Again, roll the shoulders back. As you exhale again, bring the left arm down behind you. Stay here in your twist. And hold. Holding here for eight, 
Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. And one. To come out, left palm is facing up. Tell the arm up as you exhale, return and release. All right, let's release that Vajrasana. Bring the legs out in front of you. Shake it out a little bit. Maybe kind of tough on the knees or the ankles. And let's lay down on our backs. Leg lifts. So leg lifts can be done with our hands underneath our butt palms down towards one another to release some of the tension that you may feel on your lower back. If that's not an issue for you, go ahead and bring your hands to either side of the hips. Let's check our chin right now. It's in a neutral position, looking up. Activate those legs. Remember that means that hip points, knees, and toes are all coming up. Just the right leg. We're going to lift up about 45 degrees. Remember we do this on a pelvic tilt because that's going to stabilize our core. So all together, take a breath in. Exhale, contract, tilt, and then lift the right leg up. Just about 45 degrees. Hold here. Now, there's a tendency, especially for people who have well-developed muscles in their legs, to let go of the pelvic tilt and arch the back to hold the leg. What you want to do is make sure you hold that pelvic tilt so the uh, back of your back is still towards the back. All right, and never let go of that pelvic tilt. Hold here. Four, three, two, one. Take a breath and exhale gently, release and come down. And when your right leg is down, that's when you can let go of that pelvic tilt that you had, okay? Left side, ready? Take a breath in. Exhale, contract, tilt. Feel that tilt, feel the difference in your lower back and then lift the left leg up. Now hold that bit of a pelvic tilt tension. Hold here. Relax your shoulders and neck. They don't do anything. Right leg is still active. Remember, it's still nice and straight as one unit hip, knee, and toes are pointing up. Four, three, two, one. Take a breath. Exhale, return. Okay, lifting up both legs. Remember, if this is an issue for your lower back, by all means, put your hands underneath your butt, okay? All right, legs are together. Heels and toes are together. Um, you know, I've seen it done both ways with your toes pointed or slightly flexed ankles. You, you play with it. See what works for you. All right. All together. Take a breath in. Exhale. Contract. Tilt. And now lift both legs up. Go ahead. Look that off the mat. That actually makes it easier to hold. So you can look at your toes. By lifting the head and shoulders off, we create a little more pressure for the lower back to stay on the mat. And then if your hands are not underneath the butt, if for a little more challenge, go ahead and float the arms, the hands off the mat. Hold here. Again, if you feel that you're losing that pelvic tilt, that tension here, you can bend your knees and lift your legs a little higher. 
All right, let's hold here. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. One, come out, take a breath. As you exhale, slowly release your legs. I'm still looking at my toes. Once my legs are done, I release the hands. And then gently bring the head down to the mat. Let's do a little spinal twist just to release the tension. Open up the arms to the sides, palms up. Again, using that pelvic tilt, floating the knees over the hips. Everyone, all together, take a breath in. Exhale, contract, tilt. Take another breath in, and as you exhale, knees to the right, you left. Wherever you are, stay right here. Try not to fidget, and let's hold. Good. 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 Counting down. Eight. Seven. Six, five, four, three. And one. All right, all together, come to the other side, take a breath in. Exhale, contract, tilt, float the knees up, and then all the way to the other side. And again, once you get there, let's just relax, doing our best not to fidget. Counting down, eight, seven, six, five, four, Three, two, and one. Coming back to the center all together, take a breath in. As you exhale, contract, tilt, float the knees to center. And now inhale, hands to the knees, and exhale, knees to chest. Really think about release through the glutes, allowing total relaxation through the hips so that the bottom bone of the spine is near the mat. Relax the shoulders. Hold here. Four. Three. Two, and one. And then coming right into a nice bridge pose, release the hands to your mat, palms down next to your hips, and then just bring the feet on the mat below your um, buttocks. So we're all set for a nice bridge pose. Remember the bridge pose? It's not so much about lifting your hips up towards the sky as it is about finding that beautiful rounded 
uh, curve in the back so that you can shine the heart, bringing the sternum in the direction of the head. So let's begin. Take a breath in. Exhale, contract, tilt, float the hips up, creating space for you to roll your shoulders under. Perhaps you can clasp your hands underneath your butt. Some of you can even uh, grab your ankles. Relax the neck. Keep your shoulders away from your ears as you think about lifting the sternum up and in the direction of the head. You should feel a nice lengthening in the upper back. Hold here. I'm looking right down the center of my body. Hold, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. To come out, take a breath in. As you exhale, first you release the shoulders, upper back, middle back, lower back now comes down, and only then do I release the pelvic tilt and relax. Let's bring our arms out to the side, palms up. Keep your feet and your knees exactly where they are. And in this position, we just do a very soft spinal twist. So take a breath in. As you exhale, you just let your knees fall to the right. You look to the left. The softer version of the beginning. Let's hold here. Three. Two. And one, and let's go to the other side all together. Take a breath in, exhale, contract, tilt, and then float the knees to center. Continue to the left if you look to the right and hold four, three, two. And one, let's all come to the center. Take a breath in, exhale, contract, tilt, float the knees to center. And let's do that nice bridge pose one more time. Bring your hands to the mat, palms down next to your hips. We're in position. Take a breath in, exhale, contract, tilt. So float the hips up, making room to roll the shoulders underneath. Grab your hands or ankles. Really think about keeping your shoulders away from your ears. And then think about lifting up the sternum in the direction of the head. So if you think about shining the heart first, and then you're just having your hip points facing the sky, using the lower part of your body, it's just support. It's not initiating a pose at all. You're initiating it through the rib cage. Middle, back, and upper back, all right? Here. Eight. Seven. Five, four, three, two, and one. To come out, take a breath in first. As you exhale, release the shoulders, upper back. Middle back, lower back, and release the hips. Let's bring our knees towards the chest. Take a breath in. 
As you exhale, contract, tilt, float the knees up towards the chest, release the hands to the knees, and then knees to chest once more. This position, once you feel nice and relaxed, as you exhale, lift the head in the direction of the knees, curl up into a little ball. It doesn't matter if your knees are wide or together. Hold here. Really round that back. Tuck the chin, the more you tuck your chin, the more lengthening you're gonna feel from the crown of the head to the base of the spine. And then if you can, go ahead, grab your big toes or ankles or underneath your thighs. As we inhale, make sure the legs up towards the sky. My head is still off the mat. Have a nice tuck chin. If you're okay with your head up and your shoulders off the mat, as you exhale, open the legs up into a nice straddle. Now, if this is causing some tension in the neck, go ahead and bring the head back down to the mat there. It really doesn't matter. Hold here. And stay here for eight and really just allow gravity to help us. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four, three, two, and one. On your next inhale, go ahead, bring the legs back together, up towards the sky. Keep your legs where they are, release your hands to the mat, palms down next to your hips. On your next exhale, let's roll up right into Dandasana. Hands are by our hips, roll the shoulders up and back, really lengthen the spine. Look at your feet. You should have a nice gentle suction in the ankles. Toes are pointing up, knees are pointing up. Take a breath in and as you exhale, relax. Prashimottanasana, which is a forward fold. Hands are on either side of our knees. Pull the shoulders up and back. Sit up nice and straight. I'm going to stay here just in case somebody, if you need to put a prop underneath to help you with the forward fold, go ahead and get that right now. All right, ready? Take a breath in. As you exhale, start walking your fingers forward. Hinging from the hips, let's come into a nice forward fold. Some of you can grab your big elbows, elbows to the outside and keep extending the body over your legs. For others, you may feel more comfortable grabbing your ankles or your feet. Maybe you can bring your elbow and forearm down on the mat. And let's hold here. Remember, we're not trying to get our head to our knee. We're actually trying to get our nose to the shin. So you really want it back over your legs. Hold here. Eight. Seven. Six. Five, four, three, two, and one. To come out, lift the head, length to the back. Use the palms of your hands for support as you inhale. 
rise up, coming back into Dandasana, try not to run the shoulders, hold here, just let everything settle. Stay here, shine the heart without arching the back. Four, three, two, one. Take a breath, exhale, release. Let's come into another seated spinal twist. Both legs are in front. We're gonna bend the right knee and bring the uh, right knee down. Then I take my left leg, bend that knee and bring the left foot to the outside of that right knee. Open up that right foot so I can get my, my left buttocks down. To the best of my ability, I'm sitting on both buttocks equally, on both sits bones. Now again, if that's not possible, because hips like me, ideally my left foot should be on the outside of my right knee, but that's not possible. So I just let that left foot uh, come in front of my right knee. And, and that, that's where I'm at. All right, sit up nice and straight. Take your left arm and let's see, for those of you who can bring that uh, left knee towards your chest. But what you don't wanna sacrifice when you do this is, is that you're no longer sitting squarely on your buttocks, okay? From here, release the right arm to the side, roll the shoulders up and back, right palm is up. Inhale that right arm up and then drop the shoulder. As you exhale, let's twist to the right. Inhale, grow nice and tall, and then exhale, release the right arm behind you. Holding here for four, three, two, one. Okay, we're going to release and do the other side. So open up the right palm, inhale the arm up. As you exhale, return. Both arms are in front. Now this time, take that right arm. And again, let's see if we can hug that left knee towards the chest. Sit up nice and straight. Extend the left arm out behind you. Open up the left palm. Inhale the left arm up. As you exhale, drop the shoulder. So now we're going to the left, okay? Take a breath in. As you exhale, twist towards the left. Inhale again, grow tall. As you exhale, release the left arm behind you. So this is a much more complicated spinal twist because we've also have our hips involved in this opening. It's all about finding the balance equally in all the different body parts of your hips, your back, your neck, shoulders. You do your best not to let one body part compensate for the limitations of the other. Try and have, have a nice balanced twist, even if it's not as fully twisted as you would like or it's not as deep a pose as you would like. All right, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. And let's come out, open up the left palm, inhale the left arm up, and you exhale, return and release. Switch sides, and now the left leg is on the bottom. And let's bring the right closer. Again, we're gonna do the twist on both sides. So once you're in position, feel that you're nicely, to the best of your ability, balanced on both buttocks. Take that right arm, and let's hug the knee towards the chest. Extend the left arm to the outside, open up the palm. Inhale the left arm up, exhale, drop the shoulder. Now we're going to the left again. Take a breath in. As you exhale, look to the left and bring the left arm down. So if you're feeling a little tension in the outside of the hip, 
um, the side glutes, that's fine. Don't worry about it. All here. This is going to be shorter. Four, three, two, and one. To come out, open up the left palm. Inhale the arm up. Exhale. Center and return. All right, let's do the opposite side. So now the left arm is going to hug that right knee towards the chest, but don't sacrifice uh, your nice straight spine, okay? To the best of your ability. Right arm extended out to the side, open up the palm, inhale the right arm up. At the top, drop the shoulders. Inhale, grow tall. Exhale, find the twist to the right. One more time, inhale, grow tall, and then exhale, release. Again, you really want out the tension or the lengthening in all the different body parts so that one body part is not compensating for the other. Find that harmony there. And that just takes practice and refinement of our awareness of our own body. This is an eight count for eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three, two, and one. To come out, open up the right palm, inhale the arm up. As you exhale, return and release both hands. Go ahead, bring your leg to the out. Let's come into butterfly pose. Go ahead, bring the soles of the feet together, bring the feet towards the middle of your body. Now remember, again, this is about balancing. Where can I have this position where my feet are as close to the body as I can without sacrificing and rounding my back? I still wanna have a nice, uh, I'm gonna say recto, straight, straight back. All right, now let's see if we can just hold hands once and bring your hands to heart center, wherever you are into neutral. Sometimes we also have the chin up just because habitually we're used to it, but it also works as a balancing mechanism, but it's the wrong balancing mechanism. Okay, ready? We're nice in this position, holding, doing our best to relax through the hips as best we can without sacrificing that beautiful straight back. Eight. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. To come out, take a breath. As you exhale, release your hands and go ahead, hang on to your big toes or your ankle. Let's see if we can bring those feet a little bit closer to the body. And this time you can hold on straight in the back. You can hold on with your arms to give you a little bit more balance and see if you can deepen this. Bring the heels closer to the middle of the body. Hold here, close your eyes, soft breaths, eight, Seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. To come out, take a breath in. 
As you exhale, go ahead, release the legs forward. And then let's exhale right back into that Paschimottanasana, forward fold. Hold here. For eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one to come out with the head length in the back. Now bring the hands to the mat. Use them as support. As you inhale, rise up. Right back into Dandasana. Hands are next to our hips. Roll the shoulders up and back. Relax your thighs. They do nothing in Dandasana. Four. Three. Two. And one. Take a breath. Exhale, release. Okay, coming into a supported uh, waterfall pose. That's where we put the cushion or the block underneath um, our butt so that our feet are nicely up towards the sky. Let's come into that position. We're going to hold it for five minutes. Remember, once you're in position, you do not move your neck from side to side. Take your time to figure out where you can hold this pose so that there is no tension in the, in the back, okay? That is key to this pose. You should feel the weight on the upper back and the back of the head, feeling contact somewhere between the, the, the lower back and your sit bones for most, for most people. Once you're in position, you can keep your hands on the block of the cushion if that feels good, or you can extend the arms to the side, palms up, or you can even extend them over your head, palms up. If at any time you're uncomfortable, go ahead, bend the knees and roll right out. I'm going to time us for five minutes, so close your eyes. That is time for you. Let's begin.
Okay, to safely come out of the position, bring your hands back to your cushion or block. Bend the knees. And then use your hands and your forearms on the mat as you exhale and you just roll forward right out of the position. Take the block away. And let's lay down in Savasana. It'll be a short Savasana because we just had a really nice restorative pose. Let's stay here. You can enjoy the Savasana a little bit longer today, please do. If you're ready to come out, just take note of your breath, just for a few breaths, just kind of feel where it is, bringing your awareness now, mental focus to the breath. Feel the movement of the body as you're breathing. And then once you've honed in on that awareness, that's when you start bringing movement back to the body. Letting your mental focus go to your toes and ankles. Bringing the focus, mental focus to fingers and wrists, elbows and knees. Letting your attention then move on to hips, shoulders, back, neck and head. Just noticing that in our restorative pose and in Savasana, we were doing our best just to have one mental focus, which was to breathe or relax. And now we're letting that mental focus travel around to different body parts, listening to my voice. So now there's a, there's a difference in focus and awareness. All right, as we exhale, let's all come to one side. With the support of your hands, as you exhale, go ahead, come to a seated position. Finding once more that stable, comfortable position where we have this beautiful lower spine, allowing beautiful space in the torso for all the internal organs to work at their peak capacity. Letting the chest be nice and soft and quiet as we feel the breath through the belly. Closing the eyes. Inhale, hands to heart center. Sharing the pranava one time. Take a breath in. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. 
And then exhale and bow down to the teacher within. And inhale, gently come up, opening our eyes. We're back in full awareness. Namaste. Thank you, everybody. Have a great day. Hope